Hello, welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course. And I was just smiling to myself because I've realised I've got a orange Spider-Man t-shirt on, but you know, love me, love my Spider-Man t-shirt. Okay, so we're dealing with um, this song, Project One, that we're writing and learning as much as we can about Cubase as we go. And what I've basically done is just recorded a new audio line in literally five minutes ago uh, in order to show you the comp tool, which is basically how we're going to chop up a section of audio and make a new one out of lots of different composite parts. I don't actually know if comp stands for composite, but it's basically the process of chopping up lots of takes and gluing them all together to make one best take that we can, basically. As always, I'll upload this project to my Patreon page if you want to check out the link below and have a look at that. That would be awesome. Let's just crack on. So here we have all the different audio takes. So I'm basically making this up on the spot and you can see where I've, I've stopped playing while I think about the notes that I've played. So we're gonna go through what's happened here in a moment, but just a quick note on all of these track heights. Can you see they're all different heights? We've all got a little bit kind of a bit confused. There's a zoom control here, which I frankly never use, but I do use this tiny little arrow. It's so small. Zoom tracks one, two, and uh, one, two, three, and four, I use a lot. In fact, I use them so much, I have keyboard shortcuts set up for them. So here's one, two, three, and four. And you can set up those shortcuts by going into edit key commands. And they are zoom tracks. There we are. And you can see that I've, I think these are some Cubase um, defaults that I've overwritten. I use control shift one, two, three, and four. And they're set up on my um, EK58 and I use them all the time, particularly when I'm doing this job. I'm then going to zoom in a little bit with my control scroll. So what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with multiple different versions of the same audio track. Now you can only ever hear one at a time. We've seen this before. And you can see also that this is the currently, this section here is now active and selected, the two separate things. So if I click somewhere outside of the box, this is still the active lane. It just doesn't happen to be selected. And now I've done both. So I want to isolate this phrase. This is phrase number one. And you can see me having basically various attempts at it until finally I get the one that I want. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to chop up all of these takes so that we can hear this in isolation. Uh, when you're working with lanes like this, you really want to work in musical phrases rather than strict bars or beats. Because as you've seen in previous episodes, you can have little bits of audio that come before the actual beat line. So what I'm going to do is scroll in and we can see that there's some complete silence just before the bar. So I'm going to turn my grid off. And this is where the comp tool comes into its own. Because if I right click and select this hand, that's the comp tool. And now if I press the Alt key on my keyboard, it's going to turn this hand into a pair of scissors. And now anywhere I cut on these lanes, it's going to chop them all up in one go. So all of these lanes, all of these takes have now been cut at exactly the same point. If I just undo that, and try to accomplish that same process with scissors, it's much more onerous. So you have to do each one individually. You really don't want to be messing around with all of that. We could select all of the lanes, then choose our scissors, then do a cut, but that's why it's being shortcutted to the comp tool. This is what this tool's designed for. So Alt, Cut. Now I can zoom back out, uh, right click, select my selection tool. Now I can select that, press P to move my locators to my current selection. Let's hear what that phrase sounds like. Okay, now the first thing that I do personally when I'm comping is to listen to each audio selection in complete isolation because I want to hear, you know, what's the, what's the best played. Now, if there are timing issues where it's got to be locked to the rhythm, fine, bring the rhythm in. But what I don't need at the moment is this other guitar line polluting it. 
So let's try it in complete solo, just all on its own. Okay. Now you can see that there's another couple of versions that might be better. So let's see uh, if, if any of them are. Go back to my comp tool. And I've, once again, I've got all of this stuff shortcutted. So I've basically, on my EK58, comp and delete are so important that they're actually at the bottom right-hand corner of my um, keyboard um, extension because they're the tools that I use most. And so I kind of rest my thumb right on the corner of the device and I'm constantly toggling between. I've got delete, comp, split, and glue are the four functions that I use most often because this is what I do when I'm editing audio. So now that I've got my hand tool selected, I'm going to pick one of the new lanes. And here you can see that dichotomy between active lane and selected lane. Uh, take seven is the currently active lane, but take eight is the currently selected one. If you're going to do any editing on audio, you'd be editing the selected lane. This, if I go into audio warp, I'm looking at the wrong lane here. I would want to be looking at this one and you can see it just changed. So this is our new take. Let's see what this one sounds like. of a muchness really. What's up here? I'll tell you what I did. These takes were played on the lower strings, on the fifth and sixth strings, whereas I decided to move up for a brighter sound up here. So let's say I'm happy with that last take. Generally speaking, the last take is usually my favourite because I, I know that I'm happy with it, so I stopped trying. There's a bit of a fluff there, but I'm just going to let it go, it's fine. So there's my first phrase. Now, over on the second half, we've got many more lanes to choose from, because this is where it took me a while to figure out what the second, um, what the second part was going to sound like. So let's hear what we've got right down at the bottom. The currently active lane is now my currently selected lane. Press P. And again, let's audition some different versions of that take to see which one I like the best. Okay, now then, the second half of that take is better than the second half of this take over here, but I, I preferred the first half of the, the one that I've just selected. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to use half of each of those takes. The way that we do that is nice and simple. This is where I'm going to be doing my cut. So I'll zoom in nice and tight. You can come in as tight as you want so that find the point of silence between the two lanes that you're interested in. Press the Alt key, cut them up. And now I can go to delete and I can throw everything away that I'm not interested in. Those are the two sections of audio that I want. Let's zoom back out again. And all of these previous takes are all unnecessary now. I'll show you some of my previous kind of attempts. There's no slide. I introduced a slide a little bit later. basically go back through history and every time I click on this use this hand I'm choosing different attempts so this is just me noodling around trying to figure out what the parts gonna be but I don't actually need any of that 
I'm just going to keep these two audio parts at the bottom. And I've already decided what my first part is going to be, so I can get rid of all that stuff. And now that is my composite audio take. I'm going to right click to clean up the lanes. Now I don't know why it doesn't put them all on one. It really should, but anyway, there we are. It's separated them over two different lanes. I'm going to turn grid mode back on, get my locator set up, and let's hear what that composite event sounds like. <laughs> So at the beginning of this event here, we just had, it was a bit brutal. I'm going to zoom in and see why. It's because I've cut it at bar nine, but there is audio before there. So here's me beginning to play those notes. So just to reiterate, you can cut and delete completely with impunity at this stage you haven't corrupted the audio underneath you can always go back and recover it and as we saw earlier it's just one massive string of continuous audio data okay so i've fixed that little transient that was just a bit a bit poppy so i've got all of it now i know that this is fine because i've got a little bit of silence at the front there Let's bring the rest of the music back in. Okay. The next thing they'll want to do is make sure that none of these audio sections where these events end are harsh. Now I've tried as hard as I can to make sure that all of the beginnings and ends, I've not done the beginning here, have I? It's where that needs to be. Now that I've actually got to the point where I can see the beginning of this wave, I can see how bad my timing was on that section. Um, it was played very casually. And so I'm going to fix all of this stuff, but we're not quite done yet. It's really good practice to make sure that at the beginning and end of every one of your audio events, you just put a tiny little bit of fade in as basically as much as you've got to play with, with total silence. Just put some audio fades in. Now I'm doing this manually at the moment when we come to deal with lots of audio simultaneously there are shortcuts you can select multiple events and perform edits on them simultaneously but for now let's just keep it simple i'm just putting tiny little fades into each of these this one at the end doesn't need to be quite that long i'll bring my audio event in then give myself a bit of fade out and so that event is now clean. There aren't going to be any sample pops. All of the audio has been captured properly. And so it's now safe for me to select all of those different takes. Press O, bounce them all down to a single event. And we have our nice clean audio. Now let's deal with these timing issues because that's really quite a long way before the beginning of the bar. And it's a bit, it's a bit clunky, you know, not particularly well played. Set my loop points at five and seven. Enter audio warp, enter free warp mode, zoom to locators. So here we see the beginning of the event. I zoom really tight up into this bit. I'm going to set a marker point there. Set a marker right at the very beginning. Drag that in. And now we'll just do the little bit of audio warp maintenance. I'll listen to it in a moment, but I'm pretty com These were all like so clearly played notes that I can quite arbitrarily just tidy some of the, oops, just tidy some of this stuff up. 
and know that I'm not doing any terrible harm to it. Let's hear that. I'll just press slash then to turn the cycle off. something a bit early here isn't there that one's massively early let's fix that zoom to locators that's really early very naughty it's okay for them to be a little bit early but not that much course of the project we're going to use the comp tool an awful lot like I say it's my go-to keys on my keyboard that's the one that I want more comfortable than anything else because I use it more than anything else so you're going to see lots of different examples of us manipulating audio and moving them around and actually building brand new phrases that never actually existed in in real life but all of that's to come in the future I think that's a good introduction um, to the concept hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit the like button I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.